Hi, it's Marsh from the Health and Wellbeing with Marsh Group. Hope everybody's fine. Uh, speaking this afternoon from Berlin, and I'd like to talk to you about underactive thyroids. Yeah, and some of the symptoms, the causes, and the treatments. Okay, so what is an underactive thyroid? Well, it's simply uh, that the thyroid in your neck. Located in the neck isn't producing enough hormones, namely thyroxine, otherwise known as T4. Um, symptoms that are usually slow may take several years uh, for them to be realised. The most common symptoms are being sensitive to cold, weight gain, constipation, depression, tiredness, slows not just in the mind but that of the body, muscle aches. Uh, weakness, cramps, uh, dry and scaly skin, brittle hair and nails, for the ladies heavy and or irregular periods. In the elderly it can be, uh, it can lead to memory problems and depression. Children may experience um, slower growth and te in teenagers it may start to uh, earlier puberty. If left untreated, that and that is unlikely because none of the symptoms are highlighted, um, they can get uh, a little bit more serious, such as uh, the pitch of the voice gets a lot hoarser, um, dull facial expressions, um, thinned or missing eyebrows even. Uh, a slower heart rate, deafness, even anemia. But again, like I said, it's where the, the escalate to this degree because it's usually spotted. The causes. Most causes are when the thyroid or even damaged thyroid is affected and attacked by the immune system. And as I said, the immune system, which normally fights infection, attacks the gland and so it's not able to produce enough of this hormone thyroxine T4 and that leads to those symptoms and it's referred to as the autoimmune reaction. The Hashimoto's disease is the most common autoimmune reaction and the condition does run in families. It's also common to other uh, disorders uh, related um, to the immune system, such as uh, diabetes and celiac disease. Uh, the treatment normally, and it's interesting this, normally treatment is taken by replacement hormone called levothyroxine. Yeah, and basically uh, you go for a blood test. Uh, the hormone level is identified and average doses for your age and weight and worked out and your BMI and where they should be and it might be several blood tests what are required to get the exact measurement. What is very interesting is, for, and I will touch on it in the next video, but for people with an overreactive thyroid Sometimes the dosages get wrong and then it changes from being overreactive to underreactive. Yeah? So you can swing from one way straight down to the other, uh, although it is rare. But I'll go a little bit more into that in the second video. So the treatment can cause it to go underreactive from overreactive. Uh, it is a lifelong condition, but once it's under control, and normally it's not an issue once it is, then it's a case of uh, having your blood test done, say, once a year at the doctor's, to ensure that the level is kept uh, within standards for your age and weight. Um, normally I would talk about dietary uh, intakes, but I'm not going to, uh, because depending where it is that you're up to with your hormone level, yeah, um, will dictate what is perhaps best for you at that time. 
and that's better off being done with your consultant or doctor. Um, I say again, it is a lifelong condition, yeah, but by going to the doctors once a year for blood tests, it can be well kept under control. Uh, I bid you a farewell. Uh, if you like the uh, video, please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye bye for now. Mm -hmm.